Hello there, Ray here, and I'm joined by some of the ProTech members, Ping Yu, as well as Doge. Hello there. And Zero X. Hey there. And Cats. And today we'd like to show you our simple AFK automatic floor placer. This design here is designed to be able to place down large floors, such as in a perimeter, while allowing the player to be AFK and doing this automatically. The basics of this design is that it has a movable conveyor, so this way we can move the blocks all the way to the very end of one row, and after the row has completely filled up, then the entire machine will move forward and the conveyor will work on the next row. This will continue until the player has filled in the entire perimeter full of blocks. So with this design, it has a lot of benefits compared to the old design that Zero X has made where the flying machine would have to go to a central place to pick up blocks and then move back. You can check out uh, his designs on his channel, I'll link them down in the description. But with this one, as the machine moves forward, it keeps moving the blocks with it. This way, it doesn't matter how big the perimeter is, it will always place down blocks at the same consistency. So this is our final design. It's really compact and it has a lot of special features. We had a lot of guys help us as well as like Pingyu, Doge, and Pink Excel, Zero X and myself worked on this one. And this can do a lot of different types of blocks being placed down. Now Zero X, you want to explain what's going on with this one? Uh, yeah, we have a clock on this device with the last flying, uh, with the last engine. We had the problem uh, that you couldn't hold down right click. Uh, and as this one here has a clock built in, we we can hold right click, and we don't need the the rails from the earlier design uh, to transfer the clock signal over here. So I'll just demonstrate it. So pretty much the player is only able to place down blocks, and the machine will only push those blocks when the machine knows it's uh, a good time to push them. So one of the other things that we have in this system is that we have a fast conveyor moving the blocks along. This one is quite a bit faster because when the blocks come into this position, they get moved forward, and as soon as they get moved forward, we have a piston that will push them back. Do you want to demonstrate it uh, working? The blocks are coming down from underneath, and they're going sent this direction. And once they update this observer here, then the observer comes over here, powers this piston, which will power the limestone here. And the limestone will push the block one meter forward and then reset with this piston here, which is being butted by this redstone block. Once all the blocks reach the end, the machine is able to detect that it has reached the maximum limit. And how is that done, Xerox? Uh, that's part of this uh, of this engine here. You see the piston, the, the lowest piston down here is extending and it's powering this observer here, which in turn uh, powers this piston here in the middle where I'm standing in front of. And this by piston tries, yeah, this is being batted and updated by the piston above. And this piston tries to push the front, but it can't push it because this piston is constantly extending and it's doing this in the same time where this piston tries to push. Uh, but if, if this piston can't push any more blocks, so this is at the push limit, then it can't extend. This observer won't update, which causes this piston here not to extend. And this is exactly the moment when this piston uh, will stand still and not extend anymore, and then this piston can come in and push the whole part forward. Okay, I guess you could demonstrate that by placing in the last couple of blocks for this row, and then we'll see that happen, we'll see the clock stop, and then we'll see the back piston push the other segments forward. And then it resets itself as well. It's really compact, we can pack this down a lot. As you see, it's really small. And what it also does is when it moves forward, then it also moves these segments, and these are the segments that have the conveyors on it, and it also comes along and have some more uh, slime stone that moves each segment along. Now these segments, when they move forward, since they have a slime block here, which is always attached to the floor blocks, when it moves forward, we need to get rid of that floor block that is attached to slime. Um, do you want to demonstrate that, there X, and then we can watch it? So pretty much when the entire machine gets moved forward, you will see that it's going to grab one of the TNT blocks and take it with it. Then we have a piston back here, which will push it back over here. Otherwise, we would have a hole. So you can see there's a hole there. Then 
afterwards, you can see that this piston pushed the TNT back into the hole and filled it in. This is a really nice way to come back and move the entire segment forward while also being, to, uh, being able to fill in that hole that it made. Now over here, this is where the player is placing in blocks. Now we changed this design quite a bit so that it's capable of placing in a lot of different types of blocks. So you're able to place in slabs into this as well as TNT and even blocks such as like crafting tables. So let me grab a slab so I can demonstrate what a slab would look like if you placed it in there. Um, where slabs work is that you would place them up against the side of the piston here and then they get pushed in. This way you don't have to worry about you making a double slab. If you would click here, you can make a double slab. And it also works for other types of um, unique blocks such as like rails and even carpets work. Now, we got a little bit crazy and we thought, well, we definitely need to make this machine be able to put down a floor of TNT. So we actually were able to change some stuff and get to work with TNT. What exactly did we change, Zerex? Well, uh... The first version of the faster conveyors had the redstone block uh, here, and this would obviously have uh, destroyed, uh, detonated this TNT. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, in order to put it up there, we had to r remove the normal piston that we had here before we, before we had a normal piston here. Uh, and now instead we have a sticky piston and some observers here to push back uh, the block from the floor that sticks to the slime block, that one here. It works really nice. So we also went a little bit further and we have it work with crafting tables or any block that you can click into. And what we did with this is we have it so that the player can click and place these crafting tables up against this trap door above. Now there's only like one pixel you can uh, click on to get this to be placed. It looks really bizarre. It almost looks like you're trying to click on the terracotta, but now this does work. This allows you to place down such things as like crafting tables without having to click on them. You can make a whole floor made out of crafting tables, which is pretty insane. Now the actual setup here is the player sitting on top of a trap door as well as a trap door above them. This way it prevents the player from accidentally getting shoved up underneath of there and getting inside of the machine. And we have some Actually blocks. Actually, here in the overworld, uh, or yeah, you, you can actually remove those trap drawers and replace them with carpets. Then you have a little bit more uh, space to click on on top of there. But the nice things with the trap drawers down here is you can even use this as a, at Y level zero, uh, for example, in the end dimension, which is pretty cool. And then um, these trap drawers also have a dual purpose. So this one here destroys these leaves here. So it's kind of important to have some saplings in your inventory. That way you don't have to worry about incoming items um, over. So we also have some trap doors here and these have a dual purpose because these trap doors will also destroy these leaves. And the leaves can sometimes produce saplings and you don't want the saplings to accidentally go into the hand that you're placing blocks. So it's important that you have some of the saplings in your inventory so they will stack there instead. And same goes with the pressure plates because this machine will come by and destroy the pressure plate. So you want to have those in inventory as well. Now the items themselves are sent to the player using this ice stream which has leaves on both sides and you can have normal blocks or um, ice blocks underneath here. You just need to make sure you have ice blocks underneath of the pressure plate so the items can get across. Now the leaves will get crushed and the water itself will get destroyed as well as the pressure plate. But the ice as well as if you have carpet or um, trap doors down here, those will be pushed over to the very end. So if you look at the very end, we can see that all the trap doors and ice end up at the very end of your perimeter floor. You can come back and destroy this if you don't want that inside of your perimeter. Now the items itself are sent to the player from a central location. So at the very end of your perimeter, you will want to have a system which are sending you items. And then this will allow you to place down the items as soon as they come over here, you can pick them up. And it turns out that we don't need this piston that was sitting up in the front because this piston that is to the side will do the exact same job where it will prevent this from being pushed. Now we are going to go over the history of all the different versions that we came up with from the beginning all the way until we came up with our final design way back here. So this here is Doge's original design where he was trying to make a floor placer while using concrete and he ultimately has the concrete coming in from a single location 
Then he has it moving across some fence gates, and then he has it going across another fence gate, kind of like a 3D printer. And then this way he can choose exactly where he wants the concrete to be placed. Um, the slower you place it, the less you can place per layer. So here he's placing two high, but if he goes slower, they can place it only one high. This was his original idea to make a floor placer. So if you're not familiarized with this design, this is Doge's wall builder, just converted over into a floor placer. I will link it down in the description. It's a really neat contraption that he came up with to make a, a wall builder, and I highly recommend you guys go check it out. So the entire sections can move forward one, and then you can repeat the process. And then Zero X seen Doge's floor placer here, and he is one of the original floor placer designers for automatic AFK floor placers. So when he's seen this, he wanted to convert this over into a different type of floor placer. So this was your very first design based off of uh, something Doge built over there. Oh yeah, um, this one, yeah, this was the first prototype. It, it isn't a fully working um, a device, but it already shows the principle. So. You can push the blocks in here and they are getting forwarded and this whole extension here is pushable. The way that these block conveyors work is pretty cool. The blocks come in and they get pushed this direction. This piston is only able to push them 12 meters. But as the blocks go past this observer here, they will create an update. And the update is sent around and over to this um, observer here, which will power this piston. This piston has some uh, uh, slime blocks onto it. This will allow it to pull this block forward. So what we got is blocks moving forward, and then once they go out over here, then the piston will push them one more time and push them a little bit further. Uh, but the problems we had here is that we still that that I still needed a flying machine here to go back and forth in order to push down the blocks. So in this design, we uh, do we eventually come up with a design where the floor was being placed at its original location from the get-go? Uh, so with the, with this design here, not yet, but we went a little bit further. As you can see here, the floor is placed on, on this height, but there is this one piston that we needed uh, to push down parts of it. And my idea was to add another machine back here, which pushes down the rest of it. Uh, but, it turned, but it turned out that this is not really necessary because <laughs> this, the simplest solution was just to push down the blocks below the machine. And uh, yeah, so far we stick with that. This is working fine. So this one, it just uh, rotated. Instead of the blocks coming in on the side, they come on underneath. Yeah. I, I think Ping, you came up with this. Oh, I, I don't know why, why I didn't see this. This was so obvious. But... So in this design here, you still got the uh, blocks being moved underneath of these segments. And you still got the entire segments being moved forward by this section here. But you also added on this big contraption, which is connected to these rails and observers. So what exactly is going on here? OK, the idea here is that you uh, that you're supposed to stand way back here and place the, place the blocks here. So the player is stationary, but the machine, but the floor placer comes towards you and places the floor. And then what I was with the rails? I can activate this and show it. Oh, uh, we all, uh, yeah, there's a command block here that automatically places the blocks. Uh, yeah, obviously the player can can do that too. There's another stationary conveyor here at the side, uh, which is which is powered by those rails. So the rails run on a clock, and they power this stationary conveyor until the blocks reach this this flying machine here to the side. This flying machine is built by Pingyu. I, uh, I I don't I can't really explain how this all works here. It's super compact. Yeah. And so the idea was that um, these conveyors would allow the blocks to be moved further along without the player having to be here. These slime block conveyors gets closer to this machine, and this machine is the only job this machine needs to do is. 
to uh, push the blocks over into this section of the machine. And then when it also, uh, when it runs out of push limit, then it also needs to make sure to move itself forward without breaking. So how do you have it so that it can tell when this whole row is full of blocks and how it knows to move forward? So when the row of blocks is full, then then it can't really put, then this piston here can't push it. And uh, this flying machine that Pigno made uh, can detect that. So you can see there's a piston, there's pretty much a clock inside that's uh, trying to activate, but if it can't activate, then instead what it does is it moves the entire machine forward. Yeah, you can see uh, this piston here, which pushes the carpet blocks. Uh, this is watched by this observer here. Uh, which pushes this observer here back up before it can activate the part that moves the machine forwards. What's the objective of having the rail synchronized with the timing? Um, the objective of that is uh, that if if you push in blocks too fast into this machine here, then the flying machine here breaks. So you have to limit this somehow, and that's exactly why we have this running on a clock. So after this design, or while you guys work on this design, I looked at this and I said, why in the world are you guys using a clock? It shouldn't be too hard to just put this clock inside of a smart machine, instead of having this machine depend on signal from a clock. And that's what I pretty much came up over here. So when those guys were working on the rail variation, I decided to work on my own version, which was a uh, smart device. So I pretty much had, I was trying to think of a way to detect when the um, system was full. And what I thought was, well, the blocks will come into this piston. And if this piston cannot move these blocks forward, this observer won't be able to get a signal. And if I can detect the difference between these two observers, then I can detect when this uh, row is full. Oh yeah, so this was the design that I came up with, which is a smart device. And it, it pretty much uses the thing where we have a piston that's pulsing with a observer in front of it. And long as this piston is constantly pulsing, it will never have this observer over here long enough to create power to it. And what will happen is that block will move underneath this observer here and allow this piston to pull this observer in. But as soon as the block is underneath, it will be pushed out by another system and then the observer will be reset over here. And only when the system is full will the block go into the system, but it will never leave the system. Therefore, we can detect the difference and it will allow this machine to move forward and also push all these segments with it. And this was a kind of revolutionized uh, idea because this really simplified it. Didn't need all the clocks, didn't need all the preparation with uh, rails and other things. And the only problem was I had to like figure out different ways to deactivate some of the components and what we were eventually trying to get go for was like a way to place blocks on the bottom of the world without having slime blocks catch on to other blocks and even possible to build this at like uh, Y1, which in this design it's not possible because in this setup here, I have the conveyors underneath of it. So there would always be a one air gap underneath, depending on how you set these conveyors, if you could always set them up on the side. Um, but then if they're setting up on the side, then you'd have to dismantle the conveyors by the time this machine came up to them. A lot of different stuff going on here, but eventually I simplified this design. So this is the design that I came up with. And what I wanted to do with, do with this one that was different with the previous ones is to have a smart device that could detect when the items are sent in. And they can also detect when they are leaving. So this is pretty much the important part. And this is the small smart device that we came up to do this task. So we have the same type of conveyors here, which are extending the block push limit so that they can reach um, all the way across your perimeter. And then we also have the same type of slime stone in the back, which are pushing these conveyors forward. And then over here, we just have a smart device. Pretty much what this allows us to do is that when the blocks are coming into the system, they update this observer. And as soon as they update the observer, then the piston over here will push them sideways. And then when they're leaving, they also update this piston. So pretty much what the piston does is it pulls this observer over here, then it instantly, right afterwards, uh, pushes it forward again. This allows it so that it, it will come in contact with this piston, but the observer will never put off a signal strength which will power this piston. Only in a situation where all these blocks are filled in across the entire thing, 
will the piston be able to pull it, but there won't be another update here because the item is not able to be pushed along it. Therefore, it will be able to update this piston, and then what this piston does, it will pull this segment forward, and it will pull all these segments along. So it's almost reached the end. You'll see that the observer will come over here and update this piston, which will pull all the segments. So everything gets pulled forward, and it resets, and it also pushes this segment here, and this is the segment where the player will be AFKing. So the AFK player is just sitting here right pretty close to the machine, and he's getting all his blocks from a water stream that you put down ahead of time and you want to put breakable blocks on either side so that as the machine moves forward it can break the blocks and then what the player does is he will get his items from a clock which will dispense them out slow enough so that this machine can take them in because with this machine here you cannot have the items come in at a high pace or else it will break and then that's pretty much all there is to this and then you want it so that when the machine moves forward you also want to have water streams with um, ice underneath them then where you are splitting the water, you want to have pressure plates because pressure plates can be broken off as the machine moves forward. And you can use this to travel across the entire perimeter that you have built up. Doge and I converted my other design here to make it work with concrete so that it can be all applied from a central location, which is way over there. And pretty much what he has is a piston that is just pushing uh, along these um, gates. And these gates are coming along and they're being opened up by a part of the machine and then the concrete is falling downwards. You can also use sand if you want to as well. Then it's being pushed into the floor and it's working pretty much the same way as before. Now when this fills up the row it will move everything forward and they have a little system here which will even allow the concrete that normally got stuck here to go into the system as well. It works really nice and we also built in a system that allows us to convert the concrete over into concrete blocks instead of being powder. So if I just grab some water. So with the water there and the frost walking boots on the armor stand, when the armor stand moves forward, it will frost over this water and then it'll be able to be pulled with this sticky piston here. And it's also converting the concrete powder over into concrete blocks. As you can see, it moved the water with it. This is a nice way to convert the different types of concrete powders into concrete blocks, which look a lot nicer than the powders. Cats came up with a really cool design to easily place down these gates and that's used for the concrete powder and what he has here is a flying machine that will update as soon as he placed down a gate and then there is another observer which will update the trap door or the fence gate to close again. This is a nice way to get them all placed down. The next idea that I had was to actually incorporate the clock that uh, the device runs on into the flying machine. So, so uh, another thing that you guys were working on was also to make it faster as well. Like while we're working on these other designs, you're also trying to incorporate faster ways of moving the blocks along. And you incorporate that in, uh, incorporated that into this design as well, right? Oh yeah, Pingu had an idea to make this faster, but he couldn't quite get it to work. And then uh, I, I was looking at it and uh, trying to figure it out. And then we finally came up with this, yeah. The, this pushable conveyor here is even more compact and uh, and can push blocks even faster just because this piston here pushes back this extension faster than on the other one. Yeah, instead of waiting for the observer to pull it back, you actually have a piston that is getting powered and pushes it back. Yeah, exactly. So what do you do about this clock and why is the clock better than than even like a smart system. Well, I, I think uh, your de device also had a problem with uh, holding down the uh, the right click button. Yes. So when when you continuously place blocks into your device, it breaks because you can uh, you can um, put them into fast. But in this, with this device, because it has a built-in clock, you this can never happen. So it's always placing the blocks in the, at the same speed. Yeah. You want to explain the system back here a little bit? Um, or I guess I we, remember how I did this. I mean, we can also, I guess we also can explain it when we do talk about the, the final designs. Yeah. Uh, there is this delay line here of, uh, made out of observers and when they come back here to this piston 
they, they do that in exactly the, the same moment where this piston is extended here. So with this piston where I'm standing on. Mm -hmm. I guess, I think I mentioned that to you, but you probably already had that idea yourself. And then what's this piece uh, back uh, here? Um, this piece just pushes pushes uh, this part forward. Ah. So when when the when the device forwards, it is pulled by this part here. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. this is this is best. This here is an extension that Pingu showed me. To uh, to attach something without using up any of the push limit, or is it? Uh, I guess he, I guess he he's stuck on this piece. He's, he's he has attached this piece over here, but oh, oh right, it is it is it is exactly that thing. It is. But it yeah, is I think I think this line block is that doesn't use any push limit, and then then it pulls this here and. Then there is this really long uh, line of sandbox here, but we should totally record this again. Uh, we can we can talk about this in original design. This is pretty much exactly like the original one. If you guys would like to build up these designs and use them in your very own world, I will provide a world download with each of these designs in there, and you can go in there and try them out. A really compact and useful floor placer for your perimeters or any other big projects that you have. We had a lot of fun building up this design and compacting it down and making it very straightforward and easy to use. If you guys want to check out all the other guys' channels, we'll link them down in the description. But if you guys found this interesting, show us with a like and share this with others. If you'd like to see more stuff like this, like Slimestone and other creations made for survival, you can subscribe as well as hit the bell button to get the notifications. And don't forget, if you have any questions, just ask in the comments. Oops, oops. Oh. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>